This spring, I took my kids to Free Comic Book Day at Warp 9 Comics in Clawson, and we picked up this book, Mouse Guard. And while I was at the comic book store, a lot of people were talking about how great the Mouse Guard comics are and how we have such a great artist who's behind them, who's a local man. He's from Ferndale, and I'm pleased to have Dave Peterson here to talk a little bit about uh, his career. Thanks for being on the show yeah, today, Dave. Thanks for having me. So tell us a little bit about uh, what Mouse Guard uh, is. Mouse Guard's a medieval fantasy comic. Um, it's all ages, so I have just as many fans who are four as I do who are 70. Okay. And uh, it's, it's a kind of a, it's been described as Stuart Little meets Lord of the Rings. Uh, okay. It's just a fantasy adventure with mice with swords. Okay. And uh, tell us a little bit about how the uh, Free Comic Book Day uh, came about. Uh, well, Free Comic Book Day is a really great promotion for. Um, comic book stores and publishers to try to welcome in new readers okay. and, and let new readers try something that they've maybe never tried before. Okay. Um, my publisher, Archaea, has been participating for a couple of years now, putting out a free book mm -hmm. to try to introduce them, uh, to introduce new readers into all the books that Archaea produces. Okay. Uh, Mouse Guard is one of the, the uh, lo uh, more popular titles at Archaea. Mm -hmm. I'm fortunate enough to, to have that. So, um, so they they asked me to kind of be the uh, the cover the and the uh, the main story in the book. Okay. Yeah, and these were uh, published nationally, right? Given out uh, the uh, the free comic books. Yeah, yeah. The okay. the national the free comic book day is a national and maybe even international. It might get get up into Canada as well. Okay. And talking about international, uh, Mouse Guard's really taken off. You have an audience not just uh, here in Michigan, but not just around the United States, but around the world, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm really fortunate that that the, the style of work that I'm doing has that kind of appeal. Um, and and I, have, I have just as many, or I have fans in, in Germany and England and France, um, Spain. Okay. It's, it's been translated in, I think, about seven languages now. Oh, great. Now tell us a little bit about the different formats. I see we have a couple here on the table here. We have a uh, hardcover, and then we also have the smaller editions. Sure. The uh, the individual issues come out with what you're you're holding in your hand there. Uh, it's a 24 page chapter, um, kind of like an old time movie serial. It mm -hmm. Just gets you uh, warmed up and then leaves you with a cliffhanger at the end. Okay. Six of those individual issues then go into a collected hardcover uh, that wraps up that particular story arc. Okay. Uh, I've had two of those come out so far: fall and winter. Okay. Uh, with the one uh, that you have an issue form coming out uh, early next year called the Black Axe. Okay. And that'll be in the hardcover. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you have a role-playing game here. Yes. The uh, the fans seem to be interested in the idea of of a Mouse Guard role-playing game almost from the beginning. Um, I was an old-time Dungeons and Dragons player, um, and and so that was something that interested me. And when the fans kind of started asking about it, I thought, well, that would be great if it ever came about. And Luke Crane, the gentleman who did the game design and, and wrote the book, mm -hmm. um, approached me, and we talked about game design, and I, I realized he was the right guy to, to bring it to life. Sure. And what is uh, some of your inspiration in creating the storylines and the characters? Um, I've always enjoyed all-ages stories and animal stories, things mm -hmm. like Aesop's Fables and Wind in the Willows. Um, and, and then this was just kind of a combination, Mouse Guard's a combination of my love of Michigan mm -hmm. and uh, our climate and our, our landscape. Right. Um, and then things that, uh, the, the kind of high adventures that I would imagine myself having when we would play Dungeons and Dragons okay. or various role-playing games. Right. And the uh, characters, it's all from an animal's perspective, but almost if they, as if they were humans themselves. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, they, they, they walk on ha hind legs. I try to make them as, as animalistic as possible mm -hmm. so that you really do believe that it's a mouse that has all the properties of being a mouse. But right. I have to be able to get them to be able to walk on two legs so that they <laughs> yeah. can use their hands to do things and mm -hmm. they walk and talk. And right. So there's a little bit of uh, anthropomorphizing going on. But right. But for the most part, yeah, they're supposed to be they're supposed to be very much still little little right. squeaking mice. Now when people think of working on comic books, I think a lot of them might think that you need to work in uh, Manhattan and New York or maybe out in California and LA or uh, San Diego where Comic Con is, but uh, you're able to do a lot of stuff here from here in Michigan? Oh yeah, I'm I'm able to do all of my actual producing here. Um, I, and I, really, I could do it anywhere. Mm -hmm. I choose to do it here because I, I love Michigan, and this okay. is this is where I want to live. Right. And um, so, what are some other things you have coming up uh, in regards to your uh, comic book career here? 
Uh, I have a couple more appearances. Uh, when I do get out and travel, I, mm-hmm. I do have to go nationwide and sometimes even overseas to uh, to help promote the book and okay. and meet with fans mm-hmm. and, and do all that kind of thing. So uh, I have a convention coming up in October okay. uh, at the uh, in Dearborn okay. called Detroit Fanfare. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got another October date in New York uh, okay. for the New York Comic Convention, okay. and I'm going to be going overseas overseas to the Leeds Comic uh, Festival called Thought Bubble oh, in okay. November. Great. And um, if someone wanted to purchase one of these books, uh, you know, do you go to the local bookstore, your local comic book store? Can you go online? Is there digital editions? I know that's starting to become more popular uh, with things like Comicology and, and stuff like that online. Yeah, all of those are correct. You can you can go to your local comic book store and get individual issues or the collected editions. The collected editions are available through uh, online stores and and big box retailers. And then now, yeah, digital is breaking through and becoming a uh, an actual viable way that people are reading comics. Okay. Now, um, you know, I I think people think of when you're drawing comics, you get a big notepad out and you take the ink pen and you're scrawling things out. Uh, how is that actually in reality now we're more of a digital age? you still do a lot of the hand drawings or do you use uh, computers more? Can you kind of walk us through how you do a scene? Sure. I, I do a little bit of a mix of both. Um, I'm still very traditional in that I like using pencils on paper. I like the feel of the lead on the on the paper. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'll do several sketches of the characters or the, the panel or page that I'm drawing mm-hmm. um, for what I think it should be, and then I'll scan that and put it into a template on my computer that already has all the panel lines laid out. Okay. And that way I can resize individual characters mm-hmm. or make any corrections if I drew somebody's hand too small or somebody's head too big. I can, okay. I can fix all of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll then print out that corrected edition and put it on a light box mm-hmm. uh, with my final comic paper surface on top of it. The light box mm-hmm. allows me to see through the... Uh, the comic paper down okay. to the rough, and then I use ink pens to uh, to ink in all the all the details and come up with right. the final art. Yeah, um, you know, I don't think a lot of people realize that uh, comic books actually are an original American art form, uh, kind of like jazz was created here. So have have comic books. Uh, what have been some of the things that have inspired you to actually get into this career path that you're in now? Well, I I, I loved Eastman and Laird's Ninja Turtles when mm-hmm. I was uh, about eleven. Uh, that was the you know original. That was before the cartoon had really had really come out. And uh, I was reading X Men around that same time too. Mm-hmm. And uh, but there was something about Ninja Turtles uh, seeing the names Eastman and Laird above the above the story, and that the turtles just seemed like such a weird <laughs> a, a weird creation that I yeah. thought. Uh, it's obvious that these are two guys drawing this, where the X Men mm. just seemed like Marvel turned to crank and X Men yeah. comics came right. out. Right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that, that seemed like a viable career, and I, I love storytelling. Okay. So this seemed like uh, a really a really neat option for combining words and pictures. Now, did you go uh, specialize in any programs at school, or did you just start uh, trying to get internships? How did you kind of break into the field? Um, I, I went to school for fine art. Okay. Um, I originally thought I was going to do children's book illustration because mm-hmm. when you look at the major superhero kind of comics, um, that's not really what my artwork looks like. Mm-hmm. And as much as I tried right. to make my artwork look like that, I just, yeah. I never really could. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought I was going to do children's books. And then a friend of mine uh, said, why don't you come to the local uh, comic convention in, in Novi with me and set up? Right. And, and I said, well, I, I don't really have a book or anything. He said, that's okay, neither do I. Okay. And, and just from there, I, I started putting out samples of, of the kind of ideas that I had, and mm-hmm. people seem interested in Mouse Guard, so it went from there. Okay. And, uh, you know, have you uh, won any awards or had any uh, critical praise from anyone for the Mouse Guard books so far? Yeah, I've, I've won a few um, industry awards that are, that are pretty special. Um, the Shell Dorf Award is given here in, uh, in, De- in the Detroit area. Okay. Um, Shell Dorf is one of the original creators of the San Diego Comic Convention, but he also mm-hmm. had a, a convention here in Detroit called Fanfare that's okay. recently been revived. And with that, they decided to name an award in his honor. And last year, I won a, oh, a few Shell Dorf awards. Thank you. And and also the the big one that's kind of considered to be the Oscar of comics, mm-hmm. uh, if there is such an equivalent, <laughs> uh, okay. the Eisner Award. And I, I've okay. uh, I've managed to uh, fool people into giving me three of those. Oh, wow, well, that sounds like <laughs> a, a lot of uh, critical praise then for, for, for the book there. And, uh, you know, looking at the success you've had now and be able to, to stay in Oakland County here and live in Ferndale and work out of uh, the city in your home, um, sounds like a great 
thing that people might want to aspire to, especially if you're younger and looking for a new career, and art's something that's in interest you and important to you sure and uh, with any kind of book production you can you can do it wherever you live just as long as you have a way to scan it and get it off to the publisher right so what uh tips would you give to someone say they're watching this on tv now and maybe they're in middle school or high school or you know kind of trying to decide what career path they want to get into uh if they want to follow in your footsteps uh, what would you tell them <laughs> uh i would i would tell them to make sure they draw every day okay. uh, to keep drawing don't give up Mm -hmm. um, there's lots of times that you're going to get frustrated with your own work and not feel like it's going the way you want. Mm -hmm. That's natural. Right. Um, and that it's okay to copy the people that uh, you admire, to look at their work and try to copy it or, okay. or mimic what they do, but there is a point where you're going to have to stop doing that, and yeah. that's kind of what separates the... Uh, the adults from the children in art is that you you at some point come up with your own artistic voice right okay good information there I'm sure uh, some people will benefit from that you know one of the things I liked about your artistic again and we brought that up a little bit as you look through the books is that uh, like you said it really has almost a children's uh, feel to it and uh, you know what I like about it with my kids is, is that it's somewhat of an adventure story but it's not too graphic or, or, right. or too dark to not scare off them but yet it, it's still enough of a mature storyline that I'm not like not interested in right, it's something that I can really yeah. sit down and, and share with my kids and say hey let's sit down and, and enjoy this book together and I'm just not reading it to them we're all all three of us are sitting there reading it together and having a good time thank you I, I like the idea of all ages um, stories working in that way that the kid might not be picking up on everything um, but they're getting they're getting the important parts and at the yeah. same time the adult is is sticking with it they're interested it's, right. and it's a genuine interest and not just uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of reading this because mm -hmm. my kid wants me to read this. Right. Now, I also um, have seen through your website that, and I know you're uh, on things like Twitter and social media, mm -hmm. um, that uh, you also do commission work at the different shows and sometimes even through online if people are interested. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, pretty much it's just through, uh, through conventions. When I'm at home, I really need to be working on mouse guard books. I, I seem to be perpetually behind okay. uh, with where I'm supposed to be. But uh, when I'm at conventions, I can't work on pages for the books, obviously, mm -hmm. so I do take on commissions. Okay. And it's it's fun to be able to have that connection with the fans. I'm right. doing a piece of artwork that's specifically for them, mm -hmm. and a lot of times they're giving me some kind of uh, direction for what they want. Okay, and that's something they can frame up in their den or sure, whatever. Sure, sure. And I get a lot of people asking me to do things like uh, uh, mice in love or at a mm -hmm. wedding or something like that that they mm -hmm. end up using as part of their okay. wedding invitations. Or it's obviously an important part of their life, and that's a special. Mm -hmm special privilege. Well, I really appreciate you joining us on the show today. And just to wrap up, uh, if someone wants to check you out online, uh, tell us a little bit about where they can find you um, on Twitter or on uh, your website. Uh, you can find me at mouseguard.net is the main site for MouseGuard, and okay. I'm at MouseGuard on Twitter. All right, great. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And keep up the great work. We really Thanks. enjoy it, and we're going to look forward to seeing your future editions of MouseGuard. Thank you.